Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Atkinson, President and CEO of the Chicago Zoological Society and Director here at Brookfield Zoo. And I'm here today with Carrie, one of our lead animal care specialists. And we are standing here with Elan, one of our white-bellied tree pangolins. There's eight different species of pangolins, four in Africa and four in Asia. The ones that we have here at the zoo are an African species found in Togo and Western Africa. They're a really unique animal and there really isn't anything like them in the animal kingdom. They're also known as a scaly anteater. They are their own family. Carrie, talk to us a little bit about the challenges of taking care of this animal. They're obviously very unique and uh, uh, everything down to the food that we feed them is, is something we've had to kind of custom develop. Yeah. Certainly the diet is something that is um, really challenging as far as pangolin care. They are insect eaters and they primarily eat ants and termites in the wild, so naturally there are some challenges in human care with you know, just feeding out a big bowl of ants or termites. We do have a nutritionist here on staff that's worked with the Pangolin Consortium to develop a specialized diet. As we learn more about these animals, we're constantly tweaking that diet and making adjustments so that we can maximize the health benefits that the diet provides for these animals. And something that's been sort of fun for us is that we actually do get an opportunity to feed them ants. We get them frozen. You can tell when they catch a whiff of those food items, they really get excited and they'll come out and use their long tongue to scoop those insects out of whatever bowl or whatever we're offering it to them. That's, they've got an incredibly long tongue. So, yeah. you know, almost a six to eight inch tongue inside their body that tongue actually is attached onto musculature that actually wraps all the way back around one of their kidneys inside of their body so just a really unique uh, anatomical feature something that we just don't see in any other animal you mentioned the consortium a minute ago so we work with a number of other zoos in the u.s on conservation of this species and one of the goals of this was to develop a sustainable population of these animals in zoos and that not only gives us a insurance and kind of a rescue population of these animals that are becoming critically endangered in the wild but it also gives us the opportunity to tell the story of these animals and these guys are really endangered in their natural habitat and what's driving that conservation pressure on these animals. You mentioned there's eight different species of pangolins so it's somewhat different for each of those species but universally trafficking and poaching they're currently considered the most trafficked animal in the world and they're being poached for use of their scales in traditional medicines and there's different cultural components like the making of jewelry and that sort of thing. And then in areas of Asia, their meat is considered to be a delicacy. So there's a lot of human impact driving that. And then in addition, this species in particular is really being impacted by deforestation. Yeah, so a lot of pressure really threatening this species survival and something that we're working really hard to try and turn around here. The consortium also does a incredible job of raising funds for conservation grants. So every year the consortium gives out a number of grants within the home ranges of these countries to work with local conservationists, local scientists, local researchers to support that real boots on the ground kind of science research education and community outreach programming that we're hoping will really have an impact in conserving and protecting these animals in the wild. Meanwhile here in zoos we're also working really hard to breed these animals and to build up the numbers in our population. Obviously the, the more of these animals we have the more opportunities it gives us to tell the story of pangolins, the opportunity to expand into other zoos and reach more audiences. So the breeding program is a big part of what we're doing here. Before we brought these animals here in uh, 2016, about six years ago, it was a species that had not really ever reproduced in zoos before, so it's something that we're really proud of. We actually had a really exciting birth very recently, and what was so special about that particular birth? It was the first second generation birth that we've experienced in human care, so, so at least in North America. Yes, yeah, so the, the parents were born here in a zoo. That's a really huge accomplishment for us when we think about conservation breeding programs. That means that the animals born in zoos are successfully reproducing and able to raise their own offspring. And that's the hallmark of a sustainable population in a professionally cared for setting. So something that we're really proud of the success we've had with this particular species really an incredible animal and one that we all can play a role in from a conservation standpoint. 
sustainable choices when it comes to lumber products, cell phone recycling, things that help preserve natural habitat for these animals in their home ranges in Africa can make a huge difference. Raising awareness is a big part of this. Uh, pangolins are an animal that a lot of people don't even know what a pangolin is. They often think you're talking about penguins because they misunderstand what you say. So it's an animal that really needs our help. It needs the public's awareness of the plight of these animals and the challenges that they're facing in terms of conservation. So the next time you're out here at Brookfield Zoo, be sure to come through Habitat Africa, the forest, and get a chance to see these incredible animals in their habitat. Best time to see them is usually in the afternoon. So we hope to see you out here at the zoo soon and hope you have a wonderful day.